I think you discover a lot really from uh, just traveling around, touring and, and finding small sort of instrument shops and you know even street musicians and things like that, just, just seeing what the, the vibe of the place is and obviously every culture has its own dance and its own you know traditions and nice place guys, nice yeah, place. Really nice. Really, right? You know, it's, it's wicked to be, it's such a privilege to be able to travel around and, and like absorb all this stuff and then be able to recreate it. Hello, this is Crystal Fighters in Brooklyn. We are going to play you and I. I think like the best way maybe to describe our sound would be like a combination of like old and new, like mixing on the one hand like old instruments with new modern sounds like dance music sounds and stuff like that, but also like like that old folk tradition of like you know people sitting around and singing around fire in a cave or something like that, and then mixing that with the more modern thing of like you know dance music genres and like modern contemporary pop music almost. We mix a lot of different things. We love bass culture. We're inspired by bass music, and we like to use their traditional instruments instruments in our recording and live show and then we also like to kind of represent indigenous cultures from around the world and use instruments from you know South America and African guitar tones and really just as we travel more and more we get to you know, pick up more and more instruments from different and unique regions and throw them in the mix. Probably the craziest instrument uh, is one we picked up right at the beginning of, of our band uh, and it's called the Chalaparta, the, the wooden blocks we sort of have laid in the middle of our live set and it's played by two people uh, across from each other and there's this kind of uh, syncopation or kind of collaboration on the rhythm going on between the two people and it's, it's quite unusual to have such a simple instrument but with quite a complex sort of ethic behind it and uh, yeah we, we, we love to use that in, in our music and in our life sure. Nothing else with us right now, and I ain't need nothing else, no one else but We you. played You and I, uh, that's, uh, it was the, kind of the first single, I think, off the record, or, and uh, it's, it's, it's always, always a special song for us, right from when we started writing it, it kind of felt like personal, and you know, we were going through like quite a hectic time, like touring, but also writing the album, trying to get everything finished, and you know, that, that feeling kind of gave us the inspiration to write this kind of hectic song that then kind of morphs into like a, a love song, you know, like, and tries to emulate that feeling you get when you meet someone you, you like or whatever. And it's really awesome to like play, uh, you know, the, uh, the songs that you know, from the album, like stripped down and stuff, because a lot of them were written like that. And like, so it definitely like brings it back to like the original, like, you know, thinking of the song and brings out like, you know, the simplest things as opposed to, you know, a complicated modern recording with lots of layers and stuff like that. So it's like, it's really enjoyable to just go back to how it started. LA Calling um, is about you know anyone who has kind of a night a night life more than a day time job or life and you know uh, being out there doing your thing and being away from home all the time but obviously knowing where your heart really is which is at home you know with with the person you love um, and it's also about our friend who went to jail and uh, just kind of a shout out. <laughs> To, to him as well. <laughs> I think he knew we were recording an album at the time, but then disappeared from the scene. <laughs> I think the particular lyric is, and we'll be singing this song when you're out, everything will be better. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. Like when we recorded our debut, we didn't really like know that almost like we were recording our debut. And we were just sort of collecting songs together and writing music and playing it out every weekend. And like just that was kind of our focus. And then when it came around to like the second time, we'd already like toured a lot and we'd seen a lot of the world and we'd sort of been immersed in like music like more than we had of the first. And so I think that definitely influenced us like when writing our second album, like we were playing to bigger crowds and we were seeing what reacted well. And, uh, this time round, I guess it was just like a greater appreciation of, you know, what people want to see and how people enjoy themselves. We learned so much from, from playing around. Totally. We also decided to like flip up the process and initially we were making beats and then writing lyrics kind of over the melodies and this time we decided just to start with guitars and our voices and then you know, add the beats afterwards. So yeah, it was, a, it was a fun 
kind of change for us. Yeah, well, once we kind of were settling on the name Cave Ray for the album, and we, we kind of remembered this picture we'd seen at this beautiful uh, cave, looking down into this sort of fiery pit of a cave in the Basque Country, and we, we'd always wanted to sort of play a show there or, or get out there and get enough people down. And once the album had this name and, you know, it was going around, we were like, tried to get it organized and eventually ended up doing it last month in August. Uh, an amazing cave party with local bands, local musicians playing the Chalapata much better than we could ever do and uh, just uh, drinking a lot of cider. And I mean, yeah, the Cave Rave did turn out to be probably the, uh, our best achievement, I'd say. Like, you know, it, it felt like a sort of coming together of five years of working on the music together and, and you know, in honor of this culture somehow and being sort of accepted into this very old place, you know, uh, uh, that's kind of at the center of their culture in some way was, you know, very exciting. I mean, it was it was really awesome also to be able to like do an event that hopefully like people who came to it would lose their kind of sense of space and time when they're there and like and that's like we hopefully we can like strive to continue to do that with like more events and like things that we do in future you know go beyond like a normal concert and where people can you know you know because part of our music is to provide like sort of a light to people to lose themselves and to get away from the day-to-day -day things and if we can you know take that one step further with these type of events that'd be really exciting for us. Uh, yeah, we played uh, Follow uh, last. That's from the first record, Star of Love. Um, it, we always enjoy playing it. It's kind of a sort of stream of consciousness um, and kind of gathers in speed. And always, you know, we can play it live in a big arrangement, but even just in the acoustic form, it just seems to have a lot of momentum. So we just, we like playing that one. So thank you for letting us do that. We're pretty excited about this uh, US tour coming up. Um, you know, we always love being over in the States. Uh, we've been a few times, a few tours, and now we're supporting a band called Portugal The Man, who we're really into, and, you know, it's going to be a great sort of collaboration out there on the road, and then we're doing some of our own shows. So, yeah, just USA. I think if you're from Europe, you know, America feels like a bunch of different countries, north to the south, east to the west. It's like the cultures are so different. It's like, it's fun for us. Uh, we hope people can uh, take away uh, some some energy from from our performance wherever that may be and you know when you come see us live with the full electronics and full you know uh, setup you know hopefully you'll be brought on some sort of journey of music and emotion and and you know find yourself somehow uh, changed at the end <laughs> if only a small bit and uh, yeah you just enjoy enjoy the experience you know we love creating music uh, and we hope Everyone out there can enjoy it. I think, you know, we're really glad to um, have been given the chance to put out music. You know, we've always loved creative music and, you know, we've finally got to that stage where people actually want to listen to it and that's, that's a, a, a great thing for us and to then be able to travel and communicate with the people you're, you've played, you've given music to, you know, is, is a great thing and it feels like a holistic experience so it's just really nice. It feels like more of like a humbling thing than a proud like a pride thing. Yeah. I mean it's like we feel very lucky to be able to do this to be able to do this and it's like a you know we're we're proud to be able to share our music but we're also very humbled by the experience as well. Hello we are Crystal Fighters and you're watching Babel Music. <laughs>